Syracuse leading North Carolina 9-8. In that first half, it was a 3-2 advantage after the first quarter for Carolina, but the Syracuse Orangemen outscored the Heels 7-5 in the second quarter to take the lead. And here comes Carolina with Jason Wade. Fast break situation. Half. Fast break situation, four on three. Syracuse does a good job of getting back and stopping the fast break, forcing Carolina into the settled offense. And we saw in that second quarter, Steve Schofi, Syracuse took an advantage in shots and ground balls and took control of the game for a while after Carolina had dominated that first quarter. Right, even, and came Syracuse came roaring back in the second quarter, knew that they had to do something. They had to wake themselves up to get themselves back in this game. Rob Tobin, the midfielder, over to Jason Wade, the All-ACC Player of the Year. Real nice defensive play there, long looping pass. He timed that, knocked it down with his stick, and the ball goes over now to Syracuse. One thing about Syracuse, and we saw that an example of it, Rourke Denver taking it away, the defenseman. Syracuse has some of the quicker defensemen, and here's Mike Smiley, one of them throwing ah. it, scoring! Mike Smiley, the six foot six. 240-pounder goes downfield and gives Syracuse a 10-8 lead. Well, you know, Steve, most coaches will tell their defensemen not to shoot, and they'll tell them to pass it off to an attackman or a midfielder, but but I have a feeling this young man's quite an athlete, and actually nobody picked him up, so why not take the shot? And it was a great shot, super shot. Right in the corner, right in the upper right-hand corner of the net, and uh, opens up a little bit more of a lead. Mike Smiley, who's a very tall, basketball-oriented player scores his first goal of the 1996 season, and what a time for it to come. Yeah, it's a nice time to do it. Give his team a two-goal lead. We have a stoppage of play here. Legal procedure called against North Carolina. It'll be Syracuse ball. The winner of this game will face the winner of eighth-seeded Towson State against top-seeded Princeton. As we take a look at the total halftime statistics from that first half, Carolina with the advantage in shots. You know, it would be it would be a lot more open than that had not uh, Syracuse come back in the second quarter the way they did. Carolina turning the ball over with regularity in that second quarter. Some nice defense there by by Carolina uh, stops a uh, almost a sure Syracuse goal. There would have been one on one with the goalie. Brooke Brown able to clear out for the heels. Carolina now into their clearing phase of the game. Mitty stays back. Defenseman brings it over. Now they flip to the Mitty. Now he brings it over. Mike Shortino flipping to Jason Sanders. That second midfield unit of Jason Sanders, Mike Meyer, Justin Bowman. Very effective for Carolina in that first half. Yeah, they've been seeing a lot of time out there, and they've been, they've been very productive. You have three goals out of that unit. Three goals of the eight for Carolina so far have come from that second midfield. Well, you need you need that from your second midfield. You like to see, you don't want to be a one midfield oriented team. You want balance in your midfields. Sanders works it in, fires a low shot. But again, going one on one, looking to dodge and shoot and get that shot off before the slide comes over, before the defensive help arrives. And as we've seen, Jason Gebhardt, the Syracuse goalkeeper, if he's effective at anything, it's those low shots. He's been very proficient making the saves. He has been. Shot in front, Gephardt comes away with it. There he makes a high save. And does a great job of pitching the ball out. Good clear for the Cus. Matt Kutia had two goals in the first half. Kutia, the midfielder, comes in, shoots off of Brooks. Great save there. Brooks Brown. Now Carolina looks like they're in an unsettled situation. Low shot, stop again. by Gephardt. We see that low save, save again. Unable to get it out, Carolina keeps in. Deering looks to center. In front, good defense. Great close on the ball there. Great job sliding to the ball. Here Carolina back. picks it off. Bowman in front, uh -huh. save Gephardt. That's just one-on-one -on -one with the goalie, and the goalie stood up big. I think Bowman would have wanted that back. Player down. Official timeout. It's Bowman, number 20. Justin Bowman, the 5'9 freshman. 11.54 to go here in the third quarter. 10-8 Syracuse. While we have a timeout, let's take it. We'll be back with more right after this. We're back at Rutgers Stadium. Justin Bowman being helped off the field, the freshman midfielder. And Steve Schofi, a lot happening there during that injury timeout. Yeah, well, there was a flag thrown because uh, coach came on the field without being invited on, but there, there, there will be no penalty assessed 
uh, it was a possession foul. Possession, it won't be a man up or man down situation. It'll just be possession awarded uh, to uh, Syracuse. So both teams will be at full strength here. Dick Klarman, the Carolina coach in his sixth year. Certainly concerned there because Justin Bowman has been very proficient so far here today for the Tigers with two goals. And certainly the best wishes for everybody up here in broadcast. Booth goes out to Justin Bowman. We hope that, uh, that the injury is not severe and that he does recover. The freshman from Arnold, Maryland, St. Mary's High School in Maryland. Many of the Carolina players are from New York and Maryland. Well, two of the hotbeds of high school lacrosse in the nation. Uh, the Long Island area, the uh, New York State area, and of course the Maryland, Baltimore, Maryland area, where a lot of these programs draw most of their players from. New Jersey, again, is a, a, an area that's growing in high school lacrosse. And you'll see more and more New Jersey players playing for these big teams as, as, uh, as the years go by. Kavavit, who had a goal in the first half, working against the close defense of Fox. Kavavit, he's the point man. It's centering pass, shot, knocked away. Nice job playing the cutter there, and the goalie closed that down real well. Andy Sharitz, a midfielder, taking that shot off the feed on Kavavit. But he stays back. Defenseman brings it over, gets it to a midfielder, and he'll go back, and uh, he'll probably substitute out of the box. Spencer Deering tosses it back. Jude Collins, the face-off man, who also has two goals for Carolina here. He's holding the ball out there, letting their full strength uh, develop on the field. Pace slowing down a little bit here, Steve. Yeah, but not for too long, Steve. Both these teams are up-tempo, high-pressure teams, and uh, they were just holding the ball out there, waiting to get the substitutions in. And another save on a low shot by Gephardt, off that shot by Meyer. One thing that uh, Carolina had a lot of success with in the second period, Steve, was midfield shots. They got the, uh, and, and putting them up high near the crossbar. Uh, looks like they're trying to attack that way again. Here we have an unsettled situation. Great opportunity, and close to score! Anytime you can create a two-on-one situation uh, and be able to move the ball around like they do, you're going to score goals. And on top of that is a late flag, which will put Carolina in a man-down situation now off the faceoff. Out of it with another goal for the Cuse. And we get a good look at Kavavit, the junior attackman. Two goals here today. Now it's 35 on the season. For Rob Kavavit. 11-8, Syracuse. And okay, because of the penalty, Steve, there will be no face-off, and uh, Syracuse will go man up right away. The uh, six on five man up. Good chance for the orange man to maybe take dominance in this game, but they can score here again. Although the way the offense has been this afternoon, you can never count anything, but Syracuse a chance to go up by four. They lead 11-8. Yeah, this, this, is, uh, this is big for them. This could open up the lead a little bit more, but count on Carolina to answer back. Parkatera with a low shot, and he scores! What a great shot. Paul Parkatera! What a great shot. They're getting good screens on the goalies, and uh, now Syracuse is starting to score from the midfield. Not just close one-on-one -on -one up shots. They feed across field to the open man. He has time to really wind up before the defense can slide there, and beats the goalie stick side on a bounce shot. Parkatera with two goals here today, now has 10 on the season. Syracuse with a 12-8 lead, 9.57 to go in the third quarter. 12-8. Syracuse. Syracuse by four. Biggest lead of the game. Now controlling the faceoffs. Rolling down but passing back is Toby Price. All over that uh, Carolina guy with the ball there. And Jason Wade knocked down. The Cuse has done a nice job controlling Jason Wade since midway through that first quarter. They did a nice job of taking the ball away from Carolina there. Two Carolina players had possession of the ball. Syracuse jumped all over them, refused to allow them to clear the ball. Now setting up their offense. Parkatera. Parkatera, Morrissey, Kavavit, Kutia, all with two goals on the game so far. Kavavit has it knocked away. And North Carolina will clear out. Carolina with great clearing passes. Wade, but not able to get into their transition offense. Yeah. 
And as the substitutions are made, they'll hold the ball out, and when everybody's ready to go, they'll run their six out of six offense. Toby Price on the far side tries to make a spin move. Over the head check. Nice job done by Casey Powell and Gephardt. Syracuse defense does a great job there. Casey Powell, great all-around player. He just had a collision in the middle of the field. One Syracuse player is still down. Casey Powell, who just made that great defensive play, shaking up a bit, but he looks okay, he stands up. And with 8.30 to go in the third quarter, Syracuse with a 12-8 lead. The NCAA quarterfinals here from Rutgers Stadium in Piscataway. Our second game here today features Townsend in the eighth seed against top seeded number one team in the country, Princeton. Right here, North Carolina, the second ranked team, the fourth seed is trailing fifth ranked, fifth seeded Syracuse. It'll be the Tigers versus the Tigers later on today, Steve. That'll get confusing. <laughs> a little Towson from Towson, Maryland will take on the mighty Tigers of Princeton, the number one team. Well, Coach Carl Runk at Towson State isn't intimidated by anybody. And he's, uh, he's, beaten, he's beaten his team before, not this year, but he's been in a similar situation, so he'll be ready to play. We have a 10 second call there for a failure to advance. So the ball will go over to, uh, to Carolina. The Carolina, Steve, really needs to get something going here with 8.03 to go. Plenty of time, but you want to get from a psychological advantage, you'd love to get a goal here from a Tar Heel perspective. Oh, yeah. You know, they've kind of been lulled into, uh, they've been lulled to sleep here, and they need something, they need a wake up call. And uh, part of the reason they've been lulled to sleep is the great offensive play as well as defensive play of Syracuse. Spencer Deering, number seven, has been held in check. And so is Jason Wade here. He fires. Gephardt comes up with it. Right on the stick, though, Steve. It was you know, a tough shot because he was going to his knees as he shot the ball, but uh, it was a, a save the goal he should make. Syracuse needs something to happen for them offensively. They need to get a spark. Doug Jackson. Syracuse can slow it down a bit. Morrissey controlling, taking his time. Shortino closes in on him. Carolina do a nice job there playing off the pick. Syracuse picking for the ball there. Carolina doing a nice job communicating, talking. Jeff Lowe, the football player, was back on, number 23. Sharitz moves with it now for Syracuse. Syracuse being real patient in their all even offense now. Syracuse has taken over the tempo of this game for sure. Ball knocked away. It's going to be a slashing call against Carolina. And it'll put Syracuse in a man up situation for one minute. Carolina getting a little impatient. Syracuse kind of lulling them with their patient composure here on the tack. Okay, that was not, they didn't call that a slash, they called it a hold. Okay, that's a hold there by the Carolina defender. And that would put Syracuse in a man up situation, not for one minute now, but for 30 seconds. It was midfielder Mike Meyer, number 19, who goes into the box with 6.43 to go, third quarter, 12 8 Syracuse. So Syracuse again, man up. Seems like Syracuse has been, uh, has been man up a lot this. Uh, you know, so far in the second end of the quarter. And it's hard to believe Carolina led 4-2 in the first, excuse me, the first half, 3-2 at the quarter, but it's been all Syracuse since early in the second quarter. Again, great ball movement. Carolina doing a nice job on their man down defense. Remember, it's six on five now. Syracuse holding the man advantage. Marcy and Jackson playing catch. Important man down situation for Carolina and coming up with a save is Brooke Brown. Great save there. Because that was one on one with the goalie. That was point blank one on one. Whenever you can have a goalie make a save in that situation, that's beautiful. Brooks Brown, it sounds like he could be one of those matinee idols on the afternoon soap operas. <laughs> Both teams at full strength now. Six on six. Here's Carey making the move for Carolina, good close defense, fires and scores for the Heels. Well, that might be the wake up call that Carolina needs. Brendan Carey. A great job by Brendan Carey there on an inside roll, brought the ball up one on one in front of the goal net, started to drive hard to his forehand side, then came back weak handed, probably shot and shot left. 12-9 Syracuse. He starts behind the goal, he drives, drives lefty, and rolls back righty, right here. Great shot. Beats the goalie stick side. Carey's second goal here today is 22nd on the year. 
They've held his attack mate Spencer Deering in check. They've shut him out so far. Phillips with a goal. Mark Phillips on the attack unit for Carolina, but they're going to have to get that attack rolling here. The 12 still 12 9. Carolina coming up with an unsettled situation offensively here. Carey again tries to fire underhand. Smiley, a little deflected, and Gephardt comes up with it. Doing a great job of getting back defensively, Steve, and, and closing on the ball. Good job done all day by Mitty. Ryan Cummings, number seven, he's been quiet. We have a flag play. down on the field right now. So uh, this is going to be a penalty against North Carolina. We're just giving Syracuse, it's a delayed penalty. Whistle mm -hmm. blow now, and again, this should put this should put Syracuse into a man-up situation. With 5.06 to go in the third quarter, and the Orangemen with a 12-9 lead. For anybody out there that's not a lacrosse fan, they hear me say things like six on five or six on six. I'm referring to what's happening at one half of the field. Of course, lacrosse is 10 on 10. Uh, but defenders and goalies and tackmen uh, have got to be have got to stay back to their respective halves of the field. So at any one end of the field, it'll, it'll set up as a six on six uh, confrontation. Unless there's a penalty, then it'll be uh, six on five. These man up situations, much like the power play in hockey, very important to maintaining your advantage, keeping the momentum as Syracuse wants to do right here. But Carolina comes away with it. Uh -huh. clear out. It's taken back by Beautiful. the Cuse. Parkatera in front, fires, and a goal for the orange man. Kavovic has a hat trick. That was great. That was a great play by Syracuse. I mean, it looked like Carolina did a great job on man down and, and, uh, and gained possession, but then the ball is just picked off. Syracuse one, two, three, pass. And when you find the open man right there, one-on-one -on -one with the goalie, he can fake fake low, go high, gets the goalie to commit, or fake, you know, that's exactly what he did there. He faked low, got the goalie to commit low, and then just shot high. Kavovic with his fourth goal now, 37 on the season. More importantly for Syracuse, they're back to a four-goal lead, 13 to nine. And they're controlling the face off tonight. They also have domination and ground balls generally going Cuse's way, but here comes the heels of Carolina. Here's Carolina's chance to answer back. Yeah. Jude Collins, who had two early goals in the first quarter, has been held in check since then. Carolina Mitty slipping down here quite a bit. Looks like when they go isolation and they look to drive and go one-on-one, -on -one, I've seen a lot of people slip there towards that scoreboard end of the field, Steve. The field is beautiful, but it's a little damp and a little slippery. Carolina again looking to go their isolation offense. Wade fires and scores for Carolina. There's a go-to guy, Steve. You know, they need they need some scoring punch right now. Who does the ball go to? Goes to Jason Wade, and he goes one-on-one, -on -one, beats his man, and, and uh, scores up high on the goal. 13-10, Syracuse. Jason Wade, two here today, 44 goals on the year. He uh, beats his man up top, and before the slide can come, he gets the shot. It's a high in the corner shot, beats the goalie, stick side. You know, when you see these guys beating these goalies, stick side, you know there's got to be some heat on those shots. Wade has a terrific shot from either side. Eight goals, eight assists earlier in the game. Carolina sure. controlling the face off here. Very prolific player, Jason Wade, once he gets going. Carolina on the move again. Okay, they looked at closing on the goal with defense. Syracuse defense did a nice job of shutting it off. Now it forces them into their all even offense. Brendan Carey working against. A long stick, close defense of Syracuse. Knocked away by Rourke Denver. Rourke Denver, very quick stick on defense for Syracuse. Clears well. Carolina doing a good job of getting back defensively and taking away the transition offense that Syracuse would like to run. Casey Powell with a great athletic move and then fires it over the net. Casey Powell may be one of the quickest players on the field. Well, that, was, that was quickness right there. That was quickness personified right there. That was uh, what a face dodge. I thought I thought Carolina was back in position, and Casey Powell just just put that burst of speed on him and beat them. 3:19 to go, third quarter. 13-10, Syracuse leads North Carolina. You're watching the NCAA Men's Division One Lacrosse Quarterfinals on the Comcast Network. Syracuse was a little bit out of position there, Steve, and, and wasn't able to back up on the shot. So Carolina gained possession as the ball went out of bounds. Sanders on the move again at midfield for Carolina. Spencer Deary, number seven, has been held totally in check by the Syracuse defense. We have an injury on the field. We have a player down. We get the whistle. Official time. 
Fotopoulos. I didn't see what happened. He, just, he was on the crease, and then I just noticed that he went down. Christian Fotopoulos, number 27, the senior defenseman for Syracuse, and he's back up on his feet. 2.54 to go in the third quarter. 13-10, Orange men lead. You know, uh, it looks like he's okay. That's good news for Syracuse. Syracuse has had uh, man-up situations that total two minutes in length uh, this half as uh, compared to North Carolina, who has not been man-up at all. And that zero time man-up uh, so far this half. Certainly, it's been the key facet of this game. Roy Simmons, Jr., with his back to us there. With the ball cap on the sidelines. The winning is active coach. 267 wins, 89 losses, a 75% winning ratio in his 26th season. He played on a great 57 team with a famous football lacrosse player, Jim Brown. Yeah, and took over for his father, who had been the coach of Syracuse for a mere 40 years. <laughs> Royce, the late Roy Simmons Sr., both Simmons father and son in the lacrosse hall of fame. We're gonna be looking well in the middle, the blue and black jacket. A gentleman, a perfect gentleman too. Great, great, uh, great man for the game of lacrosse. The winner of this game will meet the Towson Princeton winner in the national semifinals at noon next Saturday at Bird Stadium on the campus of Maryland. They had great crowds down there last year. We'll see what they have this year for the final four at the University of Maryland next weekend. Yeah, they had about 60,000 people for the weekend last year. And next year, that final four moves to the stadium. Beautiful Rutgers Stadium where we're watching quarterfinal action. Carolina on the move, shot by Wade. Just bounced out a little too far there. We like to skip those shots right on the crease line, right on that crease circle line. And it just bounced it out a little bit too far. 2.27 left in the quarter, 13-10, Orange men. Ball knocked away. Important ground ball. Uh, great job of running through the ground ball there. Running through a crowd and scooping up that ground ball. It takes a little bit of courage to do that. Deering tosses it back to Jude Collins, number 42, working against his counterpart. Number 42, Aaron Nissen. Well, now would be a big time for Carolina to score. They've been affected with that midfield of Sanders, Bowman, and Meyer on the field. Here's Deering trying to get something. Inside done. roll. He's going to try for an inside roll up top. Oh, he goes strong side. Great save. Save. There. Good close defense by Shortino. And a whistle. Wait for the explanation. Okay, let's take a look what happened. Okay, he's driving up top. He's 